I cracked open the Acer Iconia Tab A500 last August, and I gave it high marks for having an easy to open case, replaceable battery, and a decent internal hardware layout. But I disliked Acer's overuse of what appeared to be kept on tape, and the fact that the LCD and front panel were difficult, if not impossible, to separate. Now, eight months later, Acer is back with an updated model, the Iconia Tab A510. How will it compare? Let's open it up and find out. I'm Bill Detweiler, and this is Cracking Open. Unfortunately, removing the A510's outer shell is a bit more difficult than removing the A500's. First, you'll need to pop off the thin plastic strips that run along the tablet's sides, and then remove the screws hidden underneath. Then, using a thin tool, release the catches that hold the case to the front panel assembly. Once you've gone all the way around the case, you can lift the front panel up and out, but not completely off. You'll need to disconnect the front panel from a small circuit board that's connected to the external microphone and micro USB port. With the front panel assembly and case separated, we get our first look at the A510's internal hardware, and a few things jump right out, both good, bad, and interesting. First, the good. The A510 has a big battery. At 9800 milliamp hours, it has more capacity than the battery on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1, but less than the 2012 iPad's power unit. According to CNET's tests, the A510's battery delivered over 11 hours of video playback, which at this point beats every other tablet except, you guessed it, the iPad. I also like that much of the internal hardware, such as the speakers, battery, cameras, and motherboard, are separate components. This means that you can replace each part individually. So what don't I like about the A510? Well, for starters, Acer continues to cover most of the internal connections with what looks like to be capped on tape. Now, while this translucent film can both insulate the connection and help hold the wires in place, there are plenty of PCB and connector designs that don't require its use, and it makes removing and replacing the components a bit more difficult than it really needs to be. I also found it frustrating that you can't remove some components without first removing another unrelated piece of hardware. For example, you must remove the speakers and volume power button circuit board before removing the battery. Lastly, the LCD screen is permanently joined to the front panel with what appears to be a form of thermoplastic staking. Now, this process eliminates the need for screws, but makes it nearly impossible to replace one without replacing the other. And for the interesting, Acer is clearly using the same case for both the Wi-Fi only A510 and the 3G-enabled A511. There's a space inside the A510's case for a separate cellular card and an empty spot on the motherboard for a SIM card slot. Aside from my complaints about its internal design, the A510 is a good tablet with decent hardware. It has a 1.3 GHz quad-core NVIDIA Tegra 3 processor, 32 gigs of storage, and 1 gig of RAM, although it's DDR2 instead of the faster DDR3. And its external design may not be super slick or ultra-thin, but as CNET's Eric Franklin wrote, it's one of the most comfortable tablets he's ever held. I only wish that Acer had made it just as comfortable to crack open and repair. And to see more teardown photos, check out my full Cracking Open gallery at techrepublic.com forward slash cracking open. I'm Bill Detweiler. Thanks for watching.